showroom at Eastwood Guitars is filled with guitar wackiness. Our guitars are kind of cool looking. Lots of bright colors and knobs and switches. They are the obsession of this man, Michael Robinson. Back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, I was living in uh, California, uh, working for a high-tech company. And um, uh, the hobby was collecting uh, lots of uh, weird, oddball uh, vintage guitars. You know, the, the strange stuff, not Fender Gibson. I would, you know, find two or three guitars a month uh, that were kind of in interest to me, and I'd start building a collection. And in the mid-90s, though, that all kind of changed because uh, a thing called eBay came along. To my wife's dismay, it went from one or two guitars a month to like two or three a week to even more. Mike's next step was creating his own website, MyRareGuitars.com. Within another year and a half or so, I had you know, two, three, four hundred guitars up on this website and started getting emails from all over the world, people asking me questions about, uh, you know, how much do you think uh, Tysco Del Rey is worth and uh, have you ever seen one in metallic red and oh, I love the one in green, is that for sale? In a short period of time, people were starting to offer me seven or eight hundred dollars for something that two years earlier I'd paid one hundred and fifty dollars for, and it happened more and more and more. So I decided, you know, maybe I should uh, take a look at um, creating something new based on the old stuff. Mike took his designs for these new old guitars to the NAM show, the National Association of Music Merchants held every year in California. He was looking for a manufacturer. What I found out when I got there was you had to order 600 guitars for your opening order. You had to pay it all up front, and then six months later you get a container full of guitars from Korea or China or wherever you're making them. And the container pulled up our driveway and we literally unloaded, with all the kids in the neighborhood came and unloaded all the guitars and stuffed them down into the basement. And, uh, and, and that was Eastwood Guitar. That was the birth of Eastwood Guitars. The designs were based on names like Wandre, Mossright, Vox, and Airline. Back in the late 50s, there was an American company called Valco that made primarily three different brands, Airline, Supro, and National. That company disappeared around 1967 or so, and the Airline brand died along with it. So I saw the opportunity with Airline that there was a lot of different bands and artists that were using the old original ones. Of the big batch of weird guitars, they were becoming one of the cool ones. So we managed to get the uh, trademark rights to that, and now we, that brand has become by far our top selling line out of all the other models we do under the Eastwood brand. Back in the 1960s, this red Airline was known as the Jetsons model. The Eastwood version is called the Airline 2 Pickup. The original one was made out of fiberglass. There's really no reason to do that again now. Much easier to make it out of mahogany and route the body out of mahogany to make it look and feel and sound the same, but much more structurally better. At present, Eastwood has some 50 models in its lineup but Mike is always looking for orphan brands that he figures nobody owns. Whenever we come up with any new idea, we, we research existing trademarks or patents or any of those types of issues. Is it possible to do this guitar without stepping on anybody's toes? If you can pass that, uh, you get to the next stage, which is, is it worthwhile um, doing this guitar? Because what if you could buy an original still for uh, $500, why would you buy a replica of the original for, for, for $500? Although Eastwood Guitars is based in Canada, Mike figures he only does about 4% of his business in his home country. 45% is from the U.S. and 50% is from the rest of the world. The thing is, from the 60s, they were cheap guitars. They looked cool, but they were crap. Now they look cool and they're not crap. It's gonna take a while for the people to realize that they're not crap, certain types of people. We don't really care about them, they'll eventually come to us. I think that's, that's the way I look at it. 
And the proof is in the money. Over a million and a half dollars in sales last year. Turns out there's nothing wrong with cheap and cheerful. Thank you.